All right, I don't generally get any fiberglassing on camera because it's kind of a messy operation and you know, I can't really stop once it's started. And All right, so anyway, I'm gonna try to get this boat pedal repair. And I'm just setting up the camera and I'm gonna leave it there. Whatever it gets, it gets. And the first thing I'm doing right now is just mixing up some resin. And this is enough hardener for one gallon of resin. And I'm just gonna estimate the correct amount. You do have to get the ratios of that mix pretty good. So if you're not good at eyeballing that kind of thing, it's definitely better to, to weigh it, measure it in some way. All right. So I've got a crack in this pedal. And I'm gonna put fiberglass on this one too, before it cracks. You know, partly so the match, but also just, you know, so they'll both be, the, be stronger. Apparently, I mean, this one looks like it's gotten a lot thinner just from people's feet rubbing around it and uh, getting thinner over time. Oh, I need this to stay up while I do this. Oh, okay, hold up my foot. Well, I'll try to keep my foot out of the way, but I need my foot here to hold the pedal, hold this pedal up, and then hopefully that one will come up more easily. All right. Just dunking some fiberglass into my resin here. It's gross. It's dripping everywhere, and I don't want to drip on my leg, so I'm going to try to let it drip off. I have noticed that the last few times I've gotten resin, it's been slow hardened. So I think I have lots of time. Okay, not dripping. Don't drip on me. Of course, this does harden fast. I just have to suddenly speed up. Right. Now, whenever I do something where it wraps around a bunch of times, the top layer, the part that I was holding, doesn't have any resin on it. The resin from below is probably going to soak through and get this top part wet. I'll do a bit extra and again, don't drop. Oh, I just dripped on my lip. Great. All right. The resin is one of the more disgusting materials I've ever used in my life. It's like... This, this actually seems pretty thin. Usually it's like the cons consistency of honey. And it is corrosive, not water soluble. It does not come off easily at all. Like you need to get paint thinner and stuff, which I do not have at the moment. So I really don't want to get it on. to get all the bubbles out of this. This is a little bit tricky because I wrapped it around a bunch of times. So if any bubbles come down at the bottom, and then maybe going through several layers and whatever. But if I push it out to the side, it should stretch it sideways, kind of like a Chinese finger trap and help get any bubbles out. Yeah, just like that, right? I also have the burning coconut husk behind me to help ward off any mosquitoes that might show up, like that one right there. Because you really don't want to be whacking away at bugs while using this gross stuff. So 
So I wouldn't necessarily call this a fiberglass lesson. No, I, I've done this a lot to the point where I kind of cut a lot of corners, but I know what corners I can cut. And, you know, I know I can, I know what I can get away with. Like I've used the material now, but I know what I can get away with. Um, and if you're doing something fiberglass for the first time, you know, kind of look at a tutorial that tells you how to how to do it for idiots. And follow it. strands kind of sticking up that you can sand those off at the end. Okay, so when you get to a point where it's good, uh, it's important not to keep messing with it too much. I just want to put a bit of extra resin on the surface. For some reason, like, mosquitoes are attracted to the resin. I don't, know. I don't know if it's the smell of the resin or if it's just like, I notice it more because <laughs> I have to stay in one spot and can't fight off bugs. Anyway, the bugs do not like the smoke from a coconut husk. It's almost as good as some tobacco. Yes, tobacco. As far as I know, people started smoking because it gets, gets rid of bugs. Alright. I'm gonna stay there. I'm gonna dip this into my resin. Hopefully I can put it on there without a big mess. Oh, got a big mess already. Oops. Trying to make sure I don't move the pedal enough for that cracked spot to open and close. Well, if it open, opens and closes a little bit, maybe some resin will get in there and help glue it shut. But for the most part, I just want to want to stay stationary. Okay, mosquito, what are you doing? Get out of here.
Ooh, you know what? I think that's it. I've got two more pieces of fiberglass that I can put on. I think I need to put those on later. I need to stay just like that. How do I get that to happen? Um, oh, I know what to do. All right, now I just leave it for, I don't know, a few hours. Okay, I found a stick that'll hold the pedal in the right alignment. Now I need to not touch it for, I don't know, a couple hours. Maybe an hour? I don't know. And then maybe in an hour or two, I'll put those other two pieces on just to reinforce it further so it won't break. So this is a pedal boat here. Let's zoom out and see what we're working on. It's got pedals on both sides. Those pedals are stronger, plus they've got PVC pipes around them to protect them from the sun. Here, let's zoom up. This was the first pedal boat I made here. And it's held up really well, actually. It's pretty old at this point. And Deshaina took it over and got some solar panels for it and a motor back there. And there's some batteries down inside one of the pontoons. And it works really well. It's pretty cool, actually. And it even uses the same pontoon mold as my bigger boat here. These ones are just longer. And man, look how nice this, this paint job came out. Obviously, if you get close, you can tell it's like done by hand without any real care. But man, I kind of like that. I, li I like that it looks rough up close. But... uh it's the kind of thing that you look at from far away anyway. Man, I love how it came out. Maybe we should put tiger stripes on this boat so when she comes back. No, I'm not putting that kind of effort. Forget it. 